You write, instead of treating eyes, ears, and skin as separate sensory systems with fundamentally different modalities, we might understand them as overlapping aspects of the same universe, coupled at the same temporal resolution and almost inseparable from a single shared resonant model. Instead of treating mental representations as fully isolated between minds, the representations of physically adjacent observers might directly interact and produce causal effects through the coordination of the perception and behavior of world modeling observers. So the, the modalities, the distinction between modalities, let's throw that away. The distinction between the individuals, let's throw that away. So what does this interaction representations look like? And you think about how you represent the interaction of us in this room. Yeah. At some level, you can uh, the modalities are quite distinct. They're not completely distinct, but you can see this as vision. You can close your eyes and then you don't see a lot anymore. Uh, but you still imagine how my mouth is moving mm -hmm. when you hear something and you know that it's um, very close to uh, the sound that you can just open your eyes and you get back into this shared merge space. And uh, we also have these experiments where we notice that the way in which my lips are moving are affecting how you hear the sound. Mm. And also vice versa, the sounds that you're hearing have an influence on how you interpret some of the visual features. And so uh, the, these uh, modalities are not separate in your mind. They do are merged at some fundamental level where you are uh, interpreting the entire scene that you're in. And your own interactions in the scene are also not completely separate from the interactions of the other individual in the scene. But there is some resonance that is going on where we also uh, have a degree of shared mental representations and shared empathy due to being in the same space mm -hmm. and having vibes between each other. Vibes. So the question, though, is how deeply intertwined is this multimodality, multi-agent system? Like how... I mean, this is going to the telepathy question without the woo-woo meaning of the word telepathy. It's like how, like what's going on here in this room right now? So if <laughs> telepathy would work, how could it work? Yeah. Right, so imagine that um, all the cells in your body are sending signals in a similar way as neurons are doing. Mm -hmm. right, just by touching the other cells and sending chemicals to them, the other cells interpreting them, learning how to react to them. And they learn how to approximate functions in this way and compute behavior for the organisms. And this is something that is open to plants as well. Mm -hmm. right, so plants probably have software running on them that is controlling how the plant is working in a similar way as you have a mind that is controlling how you are behaving in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, this um, spirit of plants It is something that has been very well described by our ancestors, and they found this quite normal. But uh, for some reason, since the Enlightenment, we are treating this notion that uh, there are spirits in nature and that plants have spirits as a superstition. Mm -hmm. And I think we probably have to uh, rediscover that, that plants have software running on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already did, right? We, we noticed that there is a control system in the plant that connects every part of the plant to every other part of the plant and produces coherent behavior in the plant. That is, of course, much, much slower than the coherent behavior in an animal like us that has a nervous system that where everything is synchronized much, much faster by the neurons. But um, what you also notice is that if a plant is sitting next to another plant, like you have a very old tree and this tree is building some kind of information highway along its cells so it can send information from its leaves to its roots and from some part of the root to another part of the roots, and there is a fungus living next to the tree, the fungus can probably piggyback on the communication between the cells of the tree and send its own signals through the tree. And vice versa, the tree might be able to send information to the fungus. Because after all, how would they build a viable firewall if that other organism is sitting next to them all the time and is never moving away? Right? So they will have to get along. And over a long enough time frame, um, the networks of roots in the forest and all the plant, other plants that are there and uh, the uh, fungi that are there uh, might be forming something like a biological internet. But the, the the question there is, do they have to be touching? Is biology at a distance possible? Of course, you can use any kind of physical signal. You can use sounds, you can uh, use electromagnetic waves yeah. that are integrated over many cells. But it's conceivable that uh, across um, distances, there are many kinds of information pathways. 
but also uh, our uh, planetary surface is pretty full of organisms, yeah. full of cells. So it's, everything so, is touching everything else. Yeah, and uh, it's sense. been doing this for um, many millions and even billions of years. So there was enough time for information processing networks to form. Mm -hmm. And if you think about how a mind is self-organizing, basically it needs to, in some sense, reward the cells for computing the mind, for building uh, the necessary dynamics between the cells that allow the mind to stabilize itself mm -hmm. and remain on there. But uh, if you look at these spirits of plants that are growing very close to each other in the forest that might be almost growing into each other, mm -hmm. uh, these spirits might be able even to move to some degree, not to become somewhat dislocated and shift around in, in that ecosystem, right? And um, so uh, if you think about uh, what the mind is, it's a bunch of activation waves that form coherent patterns and process information in, in a way that um, are colonizing an environment well enough to uh, allow the continuous sustenance of the mind, the uh, continuous stability and self-stabilization of the mind, um, then it's conceivable that uh, we can link into this biological internet, not ne necessarily at the speed of our nervous system, but maybe at the speed of our body and make some kind of subconscious connection to the world where we use our body as an antenna into biological information processing. Now, mm -hmm. now these ideas are completely speculative. I don't know if any of that is true. But if that was true, and if you want to explain telepathy, I think it's much uh, more likely that uh, such uh, that telepathy could be explained using such mechanisms rather than undiscovered uh, quantum processes that would break the standard model of physics. Could there be undiscovered processes that don't break? Yeah, so, so uh, uh, if you think about um, something like an internet in the forest, that is something that is borderline discovered. There are basically a lot of scientists who point out that they do observe that uh, plants are communicating the forest through root networks and send information, uh, for instance, warn each other about uh, new pests entering the forest and, and things are happening like this. So basically, uh, there is communication between plants and fungi that has been observed. Well, it's been observed, but it, we haven't plugged into it. So it's like if you observe humans, they seem to be communicating with a smartphone thing, but you don't understand how a smartphone works and how the, the mechanism of the internet works. Mm -hmm. But we're like, maybe it's possible to really understand of the full richness of the biological internet that connects us. An interesting question is whether the communication and the organization principles of biological information processing are as complicated as the technology that we've built. Mm. They set up on very different principles, right? They simultaneously yeah. works very differently uh, in biological systems and the uh, entire thing needs to be stochastic. And uh, instead of being fully deterministic or almost fully deterministic as our digital computers are, so there is a different base protocol layer that would emerge uh, over the um, biological structure if such a thing would be happening. And again, I'm not saying here that telepathy works and not saying that this is, that this is not woo, uh, but uh, what I'm saying is uh, I'm... I think I'm open to a, a possibility that we see that a few bits can be traveling long distance between organisms using uh, biological information processing in ways uh, that uh, we are not completely aware of right now, and that are more similar to many of the stories that were completely normal for our ancestors.